Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, we are going to be talking today about a new gun that I have recently acquired, which is a Wii MP5 SD3, as they call it, or as an SD6 um, gas blowback rifle. Uh, so before we dive into this um, and talk about this guy, uh, first off, um, if you like today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you're notified of any new videos as we post them. So let's get on with chatting about this guy here. So what have we got? This is a gas blowback MP5 and it's a gun that I've kind of wanted for an awful long time. Um, the MP5 is kind of a really well-known um, firearm here in the UK. Um, it's over the years has been used by the police and you'll see armed police around the UK with, with an MP5. Um, they were you know, very popular for a long time um, in the police services. Uh, they're a sort of um, kind of made iconic effectively by the SAS um, in the Iranian embassy siege where you see those um, black clad gas masked um, men uh, breaching the, the Iranian embassy on TV, they were all brandishing these guys and essentially that's kind of what I grew up with as a kid is, is essentially this gun in some form being kind of a, uh, a sort of a blast of my past as it were. Now I've gone here for the the SD3 as, as we call it but it's essentially the SD6. Um, it is a suppressed version. Uh, this one has an, uh, the, the the folding stock. Um, this one um, essentially has um, a bunch of things with it as well. Um, but essentially, I have actually four of these. Well, I say four. I have four MP5s. Um, I have this guy here, which is actually um, the SEMA Blue Edition MP5 SD6 with the folding stock. And essentially, it's an AEG. Um, it's a heavily upgraded AEG. And I'll probably do a video about this at some point um, when I've got to shoot it again. I've only literally just got this back because um, it ate its gearbox. Um, about 10 mags in, um, it trashed its gearbox. And I wasn't happy about that. Um, but um, we have that. The other one we have, which I'll just bring up, is this guy here which is the, the PDW, uh, the MP5K. Uh, this is a Tokyo Marie one. And um, essentially what we've got here is a Tokyo Marie MP5K with the old uh, stock. Um, and I've actually, I've actually done a couple of sort of cosmetic upgrades. I've uh, replaced the uh, shell with the metal one from Classic Army. Um, I've kind of done a little bit of uh, change of the barrel and so on and rewired it. Um, but essentially we've got that as well. The other thing is I have a uh, another one of these SD6 AGs from G&G. &G. And the reason why um, I kind of got this and it was fun and it, before it ate its gearbox and um, had to be going to be fixed. Um, but I like guns with recoil. So I have a Tokumuri recoil AEGs, I have gas blowback, and I like the, the recoil of the, the sort of, uh, of these guns, and it has a bit more fun element to it. And it also, in some instances, can make using the gun a bit more tiring, um, which is actually kind of good. When you're on Milsim and so on else, you kind of want to basically feel a little bit from firing and shooting and, and feeling a little bit of the, uh, the use. So the... G&G &G one that I have has electric blowback and it's not very good. It's not, it hasn't got really a big kick and it feels a little bit lackluster. Um, so the gas blowback one, I always found with my gas blowback guns, you get much more kick, more sort of uh, real sort of feel of the, the, uh, the gun. It's not like the real thing, but essentially it does feel a little bit more uh, realistic when you have a gas blowback gun. I have my Tokyo Marie MWS, um, which is awesome. I love that gun. Um, and if Tokyo Marie did a gas blowback MP5, I would have literally bought it 
the minute it hit the shops, but unfortunately it didn't. So I got this guy from a company called Swit Airsoft. They're based in tai Taiwan, in Taipei, and they specialize in different airsoft uh, weapons from not necessarily the modern era, but going back some time. So this is in their Cold War gun section. Um, and they have a lot of guns in there and they have a lot of MP5s. And I went for this one, but they also have guns that go back to World War II and earlier. And the reason why I discovered Swit Airsoft is essentially they sh um, essentially sent a lot of guns to another YouTuber called Kicking Mustang, who has um, done various videos with different um, sort of novel guns, as it were. Um, so he's, he's done um, various sort of World War II sniper rifle type gameplay videos and a couple of other things. I think he did one with a blunderbuss or something like that. Um, again, very, you know, kind of very odd guns. And I discovered them as a result of some of the things he posted and a couple of um, sort of Twitter, uh, not Twitter, Instagram um, messages with him saying, well, that's a cool gun. Where did you get it? Uh, kind of thing. And he pointed me at Swit Airsoft. And I went there looking and I saw they had loads of gas blowback MP5s. And there are essentially two manufacturers of this style MP5 in gas blowback. There's We, um, and there is VFC. Now VFC make it under license for uh, Umarex, who have the HK uh, thing. So this is technically not a HK, um, and you know it has it's called a, a We Apache. Um, obviously because, you know, the name and trademarks and basically not getting sued, but it essentially is an MP5 in all but name. And it is a great looking gun. Now, I went to Swit Airsoft and I contacted them and I said, right, um, I'd be interested in an MP5. I was interested in the VFC one because it's a licensed gun. It has all the markings and everything else. And the version of the VFC gun they were um, had on their website is the second edition of the their MP5, um, which has some of the kinks of the first edition ironed out, and it's a much better gun. However, it's not really available outside of the Asia market. It was released originally at uh, the beginning of 2019. Um, it was announced anyway, and essentially it didn't hit the stores until much later in the year. And even then, um, it didn't hit any stores in Europe, and getting hold of it was tricky. Um, it was, it came with, um, an FPS value of 400, which is not really acceptable in the UK. So we needed some work to make it legal to use here, um, with parts that probably don't exist. Um, and when I spoke to Swiss Airsoft, they basically said, you know, we do have it potentially, but we don't have any stock at the moment and we don't know when we're going to get it in. It's a very difficult gun to get hold of because, uh, VFC don't necessarily make that many of them and they're pretty hard to get. But they said, we've got the Wii one. Now the interesting thing about the Wii one is I've been looking at this one for a long time as well. And this is one you can get in the UK if you're lucky. I've seen lots of um, people selling MP5s on their website to then discover, oh, they don't have stock or it's a pre-order or something. And it's one of these guns that just doesn't come around that often. And when they do come in, they sell out very quickly because it is a gun that, weirdly enough, a lot of people like and want. A lot of people I play airsoft with, when I've said I've been getting one of these, they've all gone, oh, wow, I won't. And this is an interesting gun, and I love this gun. It's quite nice. I've shot it a little bit since getting it a few days ago, and it's a lot of fun. So, Swiss Airsoft. I contacted them. When they, when they sell this, they actually sell them pre-upgraded. So they do a couple of upgrades, and it's a gas gun, so there's not much that really needs to be done. Um, but essentially, the things they changed was the barrel and the hop, and they also regulate the FPS. So in ordering this, I was able to say, right, I'm in the UK, my FPS limit is 350 um, for, for, for this type of firearm. Um, can you make sure it's regulated to that? And that's what they've done. And... I basically got that um, all sent to me. So how much did it cost? 
Well, this cost about $450. So it's $449. So $450. And that is pre-done upgrades. Now, the upgrades they put in this is a TNT barrel and a TNT hop. Uh, so to soft or a distributor for TNT parts. And I have to admit, it makes a difference. I, I can tell that it's got a TNT barrel and just weight shoots. And I've got a, a little shooting thing to show you. Um, but uh, essentially, this is the barrel that basically was in it. I'm pretty sure they put the same length barrel in and it kind of sits like that. So the barrel actually comes up to pretty close to the end of the 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 cap here on the side. So it will sit somewhere like that on the gun. Um, and you see, that's a nice, quite a nice long barrel. Um, when obviously this is supposed to be a silenced weapon, so the barrel on this would normally be a lot shorter. And I'm pretty sure essentially not in this one but in the g and g one the barrel does actually end um, down here and then the rest of the silencer is actually a silencer but this guy runs essentially most of the length of the other thing so the silencer is not really used as a silencer it's just used as as to to kind of show uh, and, the, and provide a look so this is a gas gun so this takes um, gas mags, um, you feed them here. They do essentially three types of mag. Um, this comes with a, essentially what they call it, the high cap, which is actually a 45 round mag. But they do a 25 or a 30 round mag, and they do a 20 or a 25 round mag, something like that. Um, so essentially you've got three steps of mag, obviously three different sizes. But essentially, this is the one I went for. I basically bought myself um, four extra mags, uh, which I think are about $50 a piece. Um, and basically, basically got four, essentially four extra mags plus the one that came with the gun. So I've got a total of five mags. Um, they are, they came pretty nice. Um, all, no leaks, um, good seals, good mechanism, nice strong spring. Um, all together, it's a nice mag. Um, it's got a good bit of weight to it. Uh, fairly easy to fill. Um, I've had gas mags for different guns that you, know, you get the gas spewing out as you're filling it and uh, these are pretty silent. There's say no leaks, good valves on them. Um, and they've also got an interesting bolt release, bolt catch type thing going on. Um, so in the top here, um, there is essentially a little catch just there. And a little thing here which is attached to that and that actually stops it firing when it runs out of bbs it doesn't lock the bolt back but it just essentially stops you firing or stops you essentially expelling gas um, with it um, empty so it's a really nice gun to shoot it's got a good kick on it it's got essentially uh, four modes so you've got safe you've got single shot you've got three shot burst and you've got full auto. So this actually does have the burst fire option. Uh, for instance, if we just look at um, this guy here, this is a SEMA one. This only has three options. It has got safe, it's got semi, and it's got um, full auto. This has got a Titan in it. Um, so with the Titan, you can program it to do burst. Sorry, boost, uh, burst. Um, but by default, it just has safe, uh, safe semi and auto. Uh, this guy's got a three shot burst and that's really, really nice. In fact, I actually put up a slow-mo video on my Instagram, uh, which shows uh, this doing a slow-mo of the three shot burst. Um, it looks pretty cool. Um, I basically um, put on here the um, little uh, 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 Picatinny rail adapter that you that got. This is actually the one that came with, I think, the SEMA memory serves. Um, it just uh, bolts on, um, fairly straightforward, standard fitting. I've got a Cortex, uh, sorry, a Vortex um, Crossfire Red Dot on here, which is actually quite nice, works quite nicely with this gun. Um, with the riser on, it kind of sits above the, the iron sights, um, and you can just see the iron sights underneath, under the the riser um, so it kind of just works um, this zeroed really nice easily um, and I did get a little bit of variation on shooting and we'll come to that in a second um, so it's quite a nice little gun really easy to use 
um, except for one little quirk and this comes down to the way that mag um, kind of works the way it locks back and essentially doesn't do a fire this little lever here does something with the trigger and the the release for the, the valve and as a result um, you kind of have to cock it and fire it once empty and then um, or not clear it when um, swapping mags and essentially it will basically um, kind of just need to be reset it is essentially normal bolt operated so that kind of slips back and it does lock up there so you can do the whole pop it down and that will cock it um, and that's actually in safe at the moment so that'll just release like so um, but yeah nice little thing very gratifying um, you know these AGs they have that but they don't really do anything uh, this just feels right with the kind of the release it's a classic thing when you have for instance the MWS you know it locks back the bolt when it's finished a mag and you just have to you know release it and it all feels really really smooth and nice and that's basically what that does it just adds that little extra bit of fun to firing so in the box you get the gun you get a mag you get a mag uh, I say magazine but it's essentially a manual um, it's very very straightforward uh, very simple uh, magazine it uh, so manual it kind of has the pictures of how to field strip I have actually stripped it um, and I have to admit it was fairly easy um, to just sort of break it down um, there's essentially two pins one here and one here um, so these two pins basically you pop these out they're kind of the standard pins you get on on the HK um, weapons you kind of little push pin you push them through with something and they'll pop out the the, uh, the stock pops off um, there's a there's the recoil spring in there and there's the return spring at the top here you can take those all pull out and then the the tri the trigger housing pops off the bottom and you're clear um, the hop is in here somewhere I'm actually have not really figured out where the hop adjustment is yet um, I'm pretty sure this thing pops off but again I haven't pulled it off it actually came pretty well kind of dialed in on the hop um, I found that I, I you know I fired it with um, 0.32 BBs so it can lift and use those quite adequately with the upgrades that, that, um, that Swift put in there um, it works really nicely so the shooting that I've done is with that uh, the 0.32 BBs um, and it lifts them they fly they're kind of perfect it does look really really good sh um, sort of um, sort of shoot with them and they do reach out a little bit further I kind of was expecting but I think that's down to the TNT barrel because um, TNT do really really good um, high precision barrels so when it comes to shooting this thing I've done a bit of shooting and uh, we have essentially a couple of things to sort of note um, the first thing is essentially FPS so on 0.2 BBs um, the maximum FPS with this was 344 uh, and this was on uh, green gas the minimum FPS was 308 and the average was 325 and this was on uh, standard green gas um, temperature was room temperature so about 20 degrees so the, the, uh, the mags were not cold um, I didn't have to use a higher pressure gas or anything like that uh, 0.2 gram BBs and that's essentially what we got with those um, then we did our shooting and so our shooting um, these was with the 3.2 BBs and this is basically what we've got here um, in terms of the shooting so we have uh, this is a kind of a, a target I've used a couple of times before but it's one of these splatter targets um, this is after I'd zeroed it um, grouping wise um, here it's all pretty good they were all sort of aimed for around this kind of bull area uh, there's a little bit of a fly that goes off down here but essentially it's fairly good uh, this is actually a, a my initial kind of ranging shot which kind of went a bit weird and then these are all essentially um, aimed for the head sort of area um, um, this one was kind of a bit of a flyer but this one again 
a little bit of a flyer, but these are pretty accurate and where I aimed. Uh, the, the stuff in the center, it, it's all pretty much where I aim, um, intended to put it, um, to say the least. Um, some were just single shots with a bit of time taken between the two. Some were a couple of double taps, um, but effectively pretty good and tight on the old grouping. And this was done at 20 meters. So this was a 20 meter zero and a 20 meter shoot. Um, so I zeroed it onto the target using my bore sighter. Uh, so this guy here. So I zeroed this against the, 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 uh, the bull. And um, we went from there, essentially. Uh, it's a pretty good shoot. Um, I say it's 20 meters. It was in an indoor environment. Um, so there was no uh, wind or anything else to sort of mess with the shots. Um, so it was kind of a static environment, but it was kind of a, a nice sort of clean shoot. So I've been pretty impressed with this. Um, it's a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, when I was shooting my slow-mo videos, I had so much fun shooting this to just to kind of catch up, catch the, the, the right moments. Um, it just feels really nice, got a good kick to it. The, uh, the actual um, stock moves quite nicely. Um, it locks in nice. Um, and when you want to close it up, you can do it just about one-handed. Um, in terms of handling, it is a nice gun. Um, really, really nice. The, the grip here is very plasticky. Um, I kind of might actually end up putting something on here to make it a little bit easier to hold. Um, Weight-wise, it's a kind of a heavy gun. Um, it's probably about three kilos, I think. Um, it's got a good a bit of weight to it. Um, it is, believe it or not, lighter than this guy. This is uh, has no battery in it, and it is heavier than this, um, which is interesting. Um, mags, on the other hand, good weight to them. Um, they allow a bit of weight to the overall carry, um, obviously because they're a uh, um, the gas mags. Uh, this is the mag that's used with this guy. It's sl it's flimsy. It's it is metal, but it's just no weight to it um, whatsoever. Um, but effectively, these gas mags do have a good bit of weight. I say I have a bunch of mags here for it. Um, so it's a really nice gun. Um, I would, if you're interested in MP5, I would definitely recommend you get. Um, one from Swit Airsoft. The upgrades seem to be on point. Um, their service was pretty good. Um, they were upfront about how long it takes, which is awesome. Um, so basically from ordering, it's two weeks to do the upgrades and then shipping um, is basically express shipping. And if memory serves, it took, I think four days to get from Taiwan to the UK. Uh, bear in mind, this is the time of year where we've got this whole human malware thing going on, uh, which is upsetting everything, um, and it still got here fairly quickly. Um, I think it was in the UK for probably about a day and a half before I even got told about the customs charges on it. Um, so even now, I think even the actual shipping time was less than four days. Um, I think it was probably even th three, because it came over a weekend. I think it was, it was shipped on the third... Um, on a Thursday, um, I pretty certainly arrived in the country on the Monday. I got told on the um, the Wednesday, essentially, that um, it had basically been um, I had custom charges to pay. I paid them straight away, and I got it the following day. So that's kind of how um, the shipping went on it, and the process for ordering was was good. Um, they delivered on what they they promised, and it's a really nice gun. So, yeah, all in all. It's a really nice gun. A couple of things I would get for any MP5 you get. Obviously, it doesn't come with this little uh, Picatinny rail adapter, so you'll need to get one of these. You can buy these um, rel relatively easily. Um, I have another one, which I have on the other MP5 that I have uh, from G&G, which is essentially, I think I bought from Zero One Airsoft in the UK. Um, it's fairly, fairly cheap uh, to get hold of, and they all fit, so they just fit on their mounting. The other thing that I got and I picked up, and I can't remember where I picked this up, 
but it wasn't the usual thing. It was a military, um, so it's an army surplus type place. But this is an actual HK sling. So HK have a particular sling which is designed for the MP5 range. Um, so effectively, we've got this end here, which kind of clips on. There's a kind of a, it's like a two point, three point sling. So there's this part that clips on over here, and that will go on here, like so. And then the back half has a kind of a little um, loop, if you can see this. And that actually clips onto this loop here, this kind of loop on the back. And you just put it on and it hooks on like so. And you can um, wear the sling in a couple of ways. Um, you can run it kind of as almost like a three point. Um, you can also do it a bit like a two point. Um, and get it mounted on your body however you feel comfortable with um, this can essentially um, the idea with this little sort of loop is you can move it over here so effectively you get to move it back and forth and adjust and so on um, around uh, around the actual um, mounting and positioning of the, the gun and the sling so it is quite nice um, and it's quite a nice sling I originally got that thing to use with this, but I put it on this and it's great, works quite nicely. So with that, nice gun, I would recommend if you're wanting an MP5, um, speak to the guys at Swift Airsoft and get uh, one of theirs and they'll do the upgrades and get it shipped to you. Um, obviously prices in dollars, um, so exchange rates are variable at the moment, um, but you know, pretty much, um, you know, look out for when, when, when you're going to buy, how much is it going to cost you. If you're outside the UK, um, again, euro, dollar, depending on what you're paying, if you're paying in, in um, the, the mileage may vary on costs. If you're shipping to the UK, there will be a reasonable duty and VAT charge. Um, when I got this, um, I had to pay £140 for VAT and import duty. Um, which is a good bit of money, uh, but that's the entire package. Uh, bear in mind the gun cost um, $450. These were $50 a piece. Um, so effectively when they ship the whole sort of thing, it, they, unlike some suppliers when you buy from um, Asia, these guys do put the actual price and value on the customs decoration. And as a result, when it entered the UK, uh, customs and excise basically charge you what it's worth uh, VAT as opposed to what somebody's made up and stuck on the box. Um, but that isn't a downside. That's just a the price of basically buying from overseas in the UK. That's not uh, where you're not paying uh, VAT and import duty upfront. So, say nice gun. Love it. I want to get some game playing with it. Um, with things are, as they are at the moment, probably not going to get into some gameplay for a little while, but um, I'm definitely going to do some target shooting and so on with it um, and do some drills. It's nice. It's actually quite a nice gun for doing a bit of CQB drills. Um, so it's definitely going to get some use and have a lot of fun with it whilst doing it. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Um, it's actually a little bit longer than I wanted to go on this. But if you found this useful today, um, please hit the like button on the video and remember subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell icon and you'll get notified when we post new content. And with that, thank you for watching and um, see you guys next time.